before I let the moms hear, there's usually, there's, it, this is not for kittens. My husband would usually bring the kids, like I call the kids, not the babies, but Arya, Hava, Athene, and Toad. And so they will have their fair share of pellets. Now, the thing is that when they have to fight with the bigger goats, they usually eat less. Athene needs to eat more. She's getting also grind at night. But Athene needs to eat more because of her pregnancy. And the little kids need to eat um, Toad because I always worry he doesn't get enough. And Arya and Ava will be bred soon. And so I am trying to get them to good condition, not good enough, which I think is what they have right now. I mean, they they hit all, um, you know, the weight and the width and the development that they need to be bred, but I just want them a little bit more. I want a little bit more weight on them. And sometimes all it takes is separating them at the time of eating. And if there's one for each one of them, they usually stay within one. And even if they fight, they still get enough because they're all pretty much the same size. Kitten, are you missing Clara? He's so bored. He's waiting for Clara or Mocha to get out so they can chase him. He lives for them chasing him. But don't worry, because when he can't get in the milk room, he'll come where the hay is in this little storage area, and he'll hide away from them if he wants to take a nap or if he wants to just to chill out of the rain. He still can do it. Now, since this is usually a job of two for us in the morning, my husband helps with what's happening outside while I'll milk. Um, He'll usually just lock this until he brings the four kids, then lock it again and leave the moms outside. Okay, let me go get the girls. Hi. Good to see you. You're a good kitten. Get in. Love you, girls. Usually Clara is the first one to get milk. Um, she always fights to be the first one to be milked. The interesting thing is that she won't fight for other things to be the queen. But she'll fight for this one thing. Uh, looks good. I haven't checked on Clarita just yet because it's a mess. I put the four kids, Toad, Athene, Arya, and Ava. They all were put into that room in the back. So they have their pellets and they have hay so they can start eating and have a head start uh, before <coughs> before the moms get there. Uh, again, it's not that they don't eat, it's just that I like to give them a head start in the morning and just make sure that they eat the most, just the four of them, and then the moms can get in and eat. There's hay for everyone, and the pellets that they're receiving over there, now the moms get a lot more here on the stand. So it's not that I'm being not fair. That's Gaia. Gaia and Briere are the ones that like to scream their heads off. I almost feel like they think that I'm gonna forget that I haven't milked them. Um, Annabelle is loud and Mocha is loud, but right now you can't even hear them. They're just upset that they can't get into the feed room in the back where they eat with the juniors or the kids. And so, that's all they care about. They really don't care that, uh, it's, they know that I'm not gonna forget to mail to them. But Gaia and Briere, being first time moms, it's like they think I'm gonna forget, 
But trust me, I want. I want every last bit of this milk. We've been making all kinds of um, cheeses, been making some and sharing with family. When my son came to visit, he took some back home. Now I want to do the same mozzarella that um, Sage and Stone Homestead shared, uh, which I've done before, um, but I want to leave them, well, I'll, I'll share it with you if I like it, but I one of the things that I like to eat for snacks is um, string cheese. It's one of the things that is really filling and it's very simple, I mean, it's just one of those things that you open the fridge, grab one, and go. So I'm thinking that I can do the same with the mozzarella, with that kind of mozzarella. Now it will require me leaving it in some of the way, which I don't mind uh, when I eat it, the, the, the store-bought one. So I'm gonna try it with the natural way, with the cheese made out of it. The cheese itself is amazing, the mozzarella cheese, I never use it for like mozzarella itself. I can never make it into a sandwich because we love to eat it as a snack. Like we cut it in strings. That's why I was thinking, maybe that's what we need. We need to make like string cheese. Um, we cut them into like thin wedges or you know, different shapes depending on the mold that I use. And um, we just eat it as a snack. Uh, sometimes we eat it for breakfast, that, some oatmeal, cream cheese, maybe toast, but it's really filling, it's natural of course, it is homemade, so I feel a lot better if I could make the cream cheese, the cream cheese, the string cheese at home, so I'm gonna try it, uh, I think it's gonna work, I love Clara, at this point, I can't remember the date that you fresh, and I have that on my records, but it was sometime the first week of March. And by now, she said five weeks freshen, maybe four, can't remember the exact dates, but she's giving me three cups every day. And uh, that is really good uh, for what we need. So I'm excited about that. She's the top producer of all the herd. So it's always encouraging to bring her in first in the morning because it kind of, you know, it goes up into the milk bottle and you're like excited about milking the rest. I'm getting a full half a gallon and a, usually half of a quart. She eats like she produces as well. So I'm not gonna sugarcoat it for you. I mean, she's done right now. So she does eat to produce that much milk. I don't skimp with Clara as far as, oh, you know, you don't get any more when you're done because she keeps giving me milk and giving me milk and I am excited. My hands cramp so bad. But I told myself I was going to hand milk for the first two months, and that's what I'm doing. One of the things I was told when I got Clara is that she was um, very likely to try to retain a lot of milk for her kids, and she had a lot of what Risha called out of retention, which she does. It's, you know, 100% true. And I honestly thought that's just the way that she was until I watched a video recently by Blue Cactus Dairy Goat and she was showing that instead of bumping the udder, she was kind of massaging it like this. This is a life changer. You can feel how you loosen the milk that it's kind of stuck in the top. I and, and at the same time you can feel the teats fill in. Once once I think I'm done with Clara when I do that she still has lots to get. 
Yeah, Clara, that's you, Mama. She looks at me like, yes, you're asking for me. And mostly it's on this side, this kind of side of her outer. And uh, I don't think it's anything bad. I don't think she's doing it on purpose. I think that for whatever reason, she always struggles to let all of the milk down. I do this massage on her udder and she gives me sometimes half a cup, sometimes three quarter of a cup more. I'm saying that in order to get to the three, this is what I have to do. Now, this probably, it's a lot, I mean, if I touch it from underneath, it's very wiggly and it seems like it's empty, but if I touch it from the sides, I can feel the hardness of the milk on the sides. So, I decided to do this and she doesn't have any milk, uh, any milk. She doesn't have any food right now and she enjoys the massage. She's just kind of staring at the wall, but, I think it gives her relief. I think that for whatever reason she's retaining that milk that I don't, I personally don't think she's doing it on purpose. You know, this is something that happened to her all the time. And I wasn't able to release that pressure before until I started giving this kind of side massages. And sometimes I go behind and up front. And you don't really have to be you know, rough about it. You just have to, and you'll feel, as you touch, you'll feel with your fingers where the milk is. And again, I'm not taking her kid's milk. This is letting me, she is letting me get this milk. She's not moving her legs, she's not upset with me. But it, once you're done, I shouldn't do that under, <laughs> when I have the bucket under it because you will get little particles of things as you do this but this gives her such a relief and I think it's only because and I'm gonna try to show you her face right now uh, that's her face right now as I massage her it gives her such relief that she enjoys it like sometimes she'll start chewing the cud, like she's trying to do right now. This is what she likes. She enjoys this massage. And I think it's because she is such a high producer. Um, at least, you know, in my herd, she is my top producer. That it's like her body uh, collects it or keeps it longer. And um, that is only happening when again she's like in a trance and this is only happening when i milk because if she has kids on her 24 7 she doesn't have this problem see now her adder is soft on the sides not a hundred percent i could keep doing this for a few more minutes but on the left side so on this side it is completely gone on this other side i can feel feel a little bit of the tension and if i keep massaging it which i need to move my bucket for the stream is as if she hasn't been milked now her udder is soft and perfect and beautiful and she's ready to go today um i'll hope hopefully i'll do another video but i'm gonna shave her i'm gonna shave her back i'm gonna clean her this one last time um she doesn't have anything sticking or anything but sometimes it gets dry so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to do a little cleaning and moisturizing <laughs> they're upset out there and um Hopefully I'll bring you along. She also has very long hooves, so I'm gonna trim her hooves as well, and we'll we'll do kind of maintenance today. We'll do selenium and um, yeah, all those things that need to happen every month. What do you think, Clara? You ready to go outside? All right, me too. I need my next victim. Come on. Come on. Maybe Briere wants to come in. You want to come in, Briere? Or who wants to come in? Well, you know where the hinges are. What happens in the hinges? Nobody gets in through the hinges. Nope, 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 nope. So that's what happens. 
Nobody gets through the hinges. I must confess that she has the loveliest udder in a first freshener I've ever had. She is kind of a jerk, I'm not gonna lie. You, let's see if you can see her udder. Your yeah, udder is so pretty. Open your legs, lady. But uh, the only thing I, you know, it, it's getting better because remember that first fresheners change their udder every day until they get to six weeks. That's when they kind of show you a better representation of what they're gonna have that can improve with time. But, you know, that's kind of the udder, the best that they're gonna look with their udder for the year, for that year. So at six weeks, you should always take pictures. If you're gonna take pictures for your website, or if you're gonna take pictures to show uh, potential buyers, you shouldn't take a picture when they're just freshened. Some people think, oh, that's probably where they have the most milk. Trust me, it's not. And I've seen people taking pictures of first fresheners as soon as they had their babies, and you're not doing any favors because they're very awkward. They have a different shape that they're going to have at six weeks. I'm telling you. And so, I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you want the best otter in a picture, um, then wait until they're six weeks fresh. Uh, if you had goats before, you probably know that's when they have the most milk, so their otter is gonna look the biggest at that point. And yeah, so that is why I am shaving their udders and I'm cleaning up their back ends, moisturizing it, putting coconut oil. Gaia! This is a nonsensical milking way, but uh, she has great days where she just stays. And then she has other days when she sees a kitty that he loves to come and fight them as they can move in the milking stand. And by fighting them, I mean he's just trying to scare them. Because he thinks he's a jokester. He doesn't understand that he's just a kitty. So anyway, um, Gaia is the only thing that I know gets better with freshenings is her teeth length. It's not the shortest. Um, Annabelle had the smallest teeth, like shortest thing, harder to milk. Milk would go and everywhere and anywhere, but where you wanted it. And um, so the, I, I know what short teeth look like, trust me. Is there something worse than Annabelle fresh, first freshening? <laughs> Probably, but I don't know. I can tell you from experience, so. But Gaia has the attachments, the four outer, the... I mean, everything that I wanted to improve from her mom, I, I got it with Gaia. Breer has a different outer. It's not as good as Gaia's. I'm just If I'm just being honest, it's not as well attached. Her, the teeth placement, it's pretty much the same. The teeth length is pretty much the same, but I, there are certain things, and I'll show you when I milk her. Like, it gets to a point where I'm like, hey Gaia, Gaia, Gaia. Gaia is very, Gaia is very independent. She is bossy and she's a leader, like a born leader. Since she was born, she has this personality that she's gonna take on the world and you better listen to her because nobody's gonna tell her what she will be doing. Um, and which is, a, to be honest, after three years of owning goats, I rather have them with that personality, especially if I'm gonna sell them. I rather have goats with that personality and not a very uh, scared goat. 
Um, I have some of those too. Athene is one of those. Like she's afraid that anybody's gonna headbutt her. You know, she she's a peacemaker. Uh, so I always worry about her. With Gaia, I can put her in a field full of goats. She will win, no matter the size of the other ones. Because not because she's bigger or stronger, but just because she's smarter. And that little girl she had this year, that little black girl. I don't know if I share with you already the names and who I'm keeping and stuff, but um, I'm keeping her girl. So in case that you didn't know. <laughs> I am keeping her girl and not only because I have a good feeling as far as confirmation, I just think that she looks the most promising, but because she is just like her mom. She's a born leader. She reminds me of Gaia when she was a, a, a little kid and I think that's what we need the most in this world. Very strong-minded leader goats that will listen to me when I milk them. Uh, Gaia won't. Um, Gaia doesn't have a lot of utter retention. She usually just lets it down. But for whatever reason, she is being a jerk. Of course, probably it's because I am, I am filming this. Because if I wasn't, maybe she was just, she would just do what she's supposed to. But what she doesn't like is when I move my hands. Like, if I let go of her udder to reposition myself, I have to make sure that the other hand is holding on to it while I reposition myself because she doesn't like when I let it go completely, then she thinks she can do whatever she wants. Now, Gaia is giving me, she is six weeks fresh, and so this is it. All right, lady, that was a lot of food for the next person that's gonna come. The next goatee, okay? So we're going. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Thanks for the bell. Who wants to come in? Okay. Well, I, well, you're, again, you're buying the hinges. Hinges don't open the door. That's not where the door opens. Hinges, remember? We talked about this. The one that is by the opening. I know, it's not. Just the way it is. You can't be pulling other goats everywhere and then come up. Yeah, that I'm talking about you, Anna. You want to be everywhere. Yet, when it's time for milking, you're nowhere. And Mocha is my second best producer. She's been since last year. Uh, and she is really good at milking, but at the last second, I mean, when you begin milking, the last second, when you're trying to get all of the last, when you're trying to get the last of the milk, she starts getting fidgety, but she's really a dream. As long as she has food that she can eat by herself. And I put the bucket behind her, not right underneath her. And then I have to aim <laughs> just because, yeah, she sometimes moves. At the end, she turns into a fidgety goat, but while I'm milking and I am dumping the milk, Go away, Carrot, leave her alone. She moves sometimes, especially the kitty's in here and she doesn't like the kitty. She chases him out of the milking room all the time and uh, she just, uh, she just likes to fight with him. So every time, go away, sir. I'll give you milk when I'm ready to give you milk. I try not to get distracted, which is, I guess, a tip I can give you if you're starting milking. I try not to get distracted the first, you know, few minutes that the mom is in the... Look at this kitty. 
You are a weirdo. Carrot, go away. He's like, you're not giving me milk? I'll find it. I'll find it, lady. You can drink the milk on the stand. What I was saying is, if you are starting to milk, what you should focus on in the beginning is to milk as fast as you can because that's when they will be entertained the most. So I usually just cramp my hands in the first couple of minutes of milking. Uh, milking shouldn't take you more than five per dough. Uh, depending on your experience, it could be a longer process. Like I remember when I first started, it was uh, such a long process for me. So yeah, don't get discouraged. You'll get it eventually. Just try to, you know, the easiest milk is the first one to come out. So if you focus on getting getting it out as fast as you can, then you're gonna make your life easier to finish milking. Like right now, I need to massage her at her. Now, Mocha is has the same thing that Clara does too. She has a lot of milk retention or udder retention, um, and it's all up here in her udder. I don't know if I can show you, it's on the sides up here. So I'm telling you that this tip, and this, I'm gonna find the video and I'm gonna put it down below. It was a video that she was sharing uh, about, you know, the first milking after they have kids. So maybe, you know, that would be helpful for you if you haven't watched that video. I feel like sometimes with those channels that have tons of videos, you. <laughs> Sometimes you feel like you've heard it all or you've seen it all when they are doing some kind of tutorial But I'm telling you sometimes there's a little tip and thing that you needed and I needed it like I Thought that that was such a great piece of information that I needed and uh, It's been helping me a lot with Mocha and Clara not so much the rest because they don't, I mean, they have very soft udders and they let their milk down. And again, if you think about it, my top producers are Mocha and Clara, and they're both the only ones that have this problem. No Annabelle, no Briere, no Gaia. So I assume that whatever is happening to them is because they have, they produce so much milk, which, Kind of worries me because I don't want them to get mastitis and you know that is a real concern. I've seen people that they don't do much after they start trying their doughs and if I didn't do much after trying to dry Clara or Mocha I can assure you that these adders would get really really sick because they can't help it. They produce and produce and produce and um, and again, same thing as Clara. As long as I am providing nutritious food for them, their milk, their milk tastes good. They're producing a lot, and everyone is happy. If you are trying to save at the time of milking, or you say, "Well, she needs whatever a pound per cup." and you just go by the rules and not listen to what your dough is telling you, sometimes that will be a big factor on the success on what you're trying to achieve. Either good tasting milk, um, the fact that you want to make cheeses and butter and all those things. And so it's very important. Now, the difference between Clara and Mocha too is that Mocha um, loves to keep a lot of milk for her babies and Clara does too but not as much as Mocha does. So since so she's eating I'm gonna keep massaging and I'm gonna keep trying to let the milk down. And see, she is letting milk down and her udder is getting softer, which is what I want. But, um, she's also pretty much 
telling me that she's done. The stream of milk is telling me that she doesn't want to give me more milk. And this is okay. She feels like that's as much as she needs for her kids. I just will continue to get a little bit more from this side where I feel the... And again, it's kind of hard to explain what it feels like, but if you've ever touched an empty udder, it's very jumpy and it's very soft. You can feel the skin, I should say. When you have udder retention, or when you have um, milk stuck up here, it will feel like a muscle. Like if you were touching a muscle in your leg, that's kind of, but not really the feeling. That's as close as I can describe it to what it feels like. And again, when I bump the doughs, they don't really care for it. I, I think it reminds, us that, reminds them of their kids. But she enjoys when I do the little moving around of her udder because I think it brings relief to her and um, that's my star you're my star yeah she's like okay good can I keep eating now she is back to her normal condition she gained some weight as you can see and I'm really happy that she gained some weight I think it has a lot more to do that I'm making sure she eats quite a bit every morning and every night. As far as alfalfa pellets, alfalfa is something that they do need. No matter what they say about grain, alfalfa, they need it. They do need it. So I think that's why she's jumping back into her old self. Huh. Huh. All right. We'll see. It's by the hinges. I'm not getting in. Oh, finally, you got it, Annabelle. Okay, and as always, as I was telling you in the previous video, there's rain hiding under the pellets. And why I do that is because they take their time. And I'm at this point, apparently she's really hungry because she's not slowing down. She's actually eating the alfalfa pellets, which is okay. Um, you can see Annabelle's outer. She has a lot of height in her, <laughs> you can see that. This is like a big balloon. The easiest to milk big balloon you'll ever see in your life. Um, and I love it. I love her for it. You kind of, I don't know, kind of always want to milk her at the end because I feel like I can finish faster. The only thing I don't like about Annabelle, well, one of the things I don't like about her udder is that she has teeth that point outward. And so I really have to make an effort to aim into the bucket because otherwise it goes everywhere. So I have to grab onto the teeth and make sure that it's going where I want it. But she's such a dream to milk. Now, she is doing better as far as, far as milk producing, but she's not consistent. Uh, consistently, she's giving me two cups. And that's pretty much it. Uh, but there are some days that she'll produce a little bit more for whatever reason. Some days she will be producing less. So, I don't know. It's just one of those things that I don't... I don't see the difference, maybe she ate more, maybe the kids ate less, I don't know what the deal is, but it's not consistent, so I can never tell you, you know, she's giving me three cups, because it's like sometimes once a week she does, but most of the time she's closer to the two cups mark, which it's low for her because Gaia's giving me two cups, she's the first freshener, and she only has twins, so... Uh, it is, but I can milk her all day long. Annabelle is also one of my strongest girls. She's the 
herd queen. She is very sweet to kids that want to eat and other moms are being mean to. I think I showed you that before. I mean, she does have a sweet spot, but she's a very strong leader. She's a very um, stubborn goat. Uh, and she, but for the most part, she listens. And you know, Gaia is a little bit more stubborn than she is. The problem with Gaia fighting with Annabelle is that Annabelle will not back down from a fight. She'll fight until she's bleeding, and Gaia is not at that point yet. So they're both struggling in the power world. See, that was almost two cups. But then, once she gives me those initial almost two cups, then I have to work a little bit more intensely to make sure I get out of the re I get out the rest. And I think it's mostly because of my fingers are tired, but who knows? But for my best producer, she is kind of in the third spot, along with. Gaia. Now, granted, Gaia in that spot because she's more consistent on what she's producing compared to Annabelle. But a third freshener versus a first freshener, yeah, that's not great. But I love Annabelle, I love how easy she milks, and I really want to get girls out of her that will have her skin texture, like the texture of her udder, her daringness, uh, her height in the udder, and um, kind of hopefully take the four udder from Dom side and get the teeth placement from Dom's side. And you know, we're trying to come up with a Frankenstein dough between Annabelle and uh, Dom, which is why I'm keeping one of her girls. It was reserved, but I ended up deciding to keep her because uh, I sold the other two, well, you know, her other two girls. So I was like, am I really not gonna keep one of Annabelle and Dom, which is my most anticipated breeding as far as improving her herd. So, let's see, I have Gaia's because I explain why, and I have Annabelle's because I explain why, and Mocha because last year she didn't have a, a girl, she had four boys, if you remember last year, and out of those four boys, we kept Toad because he got sick and he will be uh, needy little boy for the rest of his life and you know he's a sweet goat he could go as you know a companion for somebody who's having some kind of a PTSD or that kind of thing like um, emotional support animal but that person would have to uh, know about goats I just I will not sell him to somebody that is not experiencing goats and that person never came along with my standard so he ended up staying here. All right, get ready. Goodbye. Have a great day. Come on, Briere. Briere, those are the hinges. What did we say about hinges? Hinges are not your friends if you want to get in. Good job. Go by the opening, not the hinges. Okay, put your head in there. I promise I'll bring you food. There you go. Okay, hold on. Let me get your food. You don't have to look. Not like I'm gonna trick you. There you go. Clean a little bit here. Okay, this is rare. And she loves Loves to put herself against that thing. I don't love it. I'm trying to, to have her move all the time. Oh, something I wanted to report back. 
about Briere. <laughs> Remember I was telling you that she has a pocket in the front? Well, let me tell you something. It's gone. So, there you go. I didn't even have to wait for other fresheners. It just went away. I guess it's just because now she has, she's producing more milk and so she filled that pocket with milk. I don't know. Could be that. Could be other things. But she squats while I milk her, but still okay. And you know, and shut the amino. Yeah, you did not have seven kids. One, two, three, four, five. Those are not all your kids. Those are definitely not all of her kids. This is Clarita chasing Annabelle. Okay, so this is what I was saying. Let's see if I can focus on something. So now, these kids, all eight, they were eating hay when I came, and now I'm gonna open it so they can come out. But they had as much hay as they wanted. They had their own grain, and now I'm gonna open this so the moms can go in, they can come out, and uh, hopefully Clara will get out of the way. She's feeding her kids right there. Hi children, hello. Do you guys have good breakfast? You can see that he did. Look at Mocha. She's trying to stay for her kids, but then all the other kids come and they want to drink from her and she starts wondering, <laughs> look, look over here. She's like, those are my two. Are those your babies, Clara? Are those your babies? Good job, Mama. Feeding children. Oh, look. <laughs> Annabelle brings like 27 kids that they're not hers. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she was feeding Captain America and her black boys. Let me open the gate so they can be in there because it's raining right now. 